For many refugees, South Africa is a safe haven. Hundreds, if not thousands, flock the country every year to seek asylum and in pursuit of a brighter future. But whilst majority of South Africans are receptive to refugees, xenophobia remains a major concern. As the country joins the world in marking the World Refugee Day, humanitarian organizations in the country are calling for more to be done to protect refugees. I think that given particularly the history of South Africa, the history of the pain of apartheid and what it took, we've just come from celebrating June 16th and, and respecting the bravery of that class of, of 1976 and what they did to change the trajectory of our history, that we should never make the same mistake again and treat another fellow human being uh, with disrespect for their human dignity. Most refugees, especially those from Africa, say they face several challenges in their attempt to integrate with the local community in South Africa. Obvious challenges that we face, uh, the usual ones that we have is that um, of the documentation. If I'm not documented, I'm, I'm very easily uh, taken for granted to say, like uh, when it comes to the payment and all that stuff and all that, I'll take whatever comes. I'm living in Soweto at the moment. It's a, it's a refugee, refugee center and it's a center that caters for the people like uh, myself who, can, who don't have documentation to get employed and uh, be part of the process in the South African social status. South Africa was under the spotlight earlier this year when its human rights record was reviewed by the United Nations for the first time. The review by the Human Rights Committee in Geneva sought to gain clarity on issues including manifestations of racism and xenophobia. Eden Estenizen, a legal researcher of the South African Human Rights Commission, says advocacy is very important in dealing with discrimination and xenophobia. I think we need to maintain in our country a commitment to our international commitments to protecting refugees and migrants and to maintain a human rights based approach to migration in the country. And I also think it's so important to remember that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights in particular, it doesn't just apply to citizens of the country, it applies to everyone who live in it and I think we really need to promote that. Last year seven people were killed and about 5,000 displaced when violence against foreign nationals broke out south of Durban and spread to other parts of the metro. Susan Mogeli, CCTV. Well, for more on World Refugee Day, we're now joined here in our Nairobi studio by Duke Mwancha, spokesperson for the United Nations High Commission for Refugees uh, in Kenya. Duke, thank you for joining us. Um, we're, we're hearing, of course, now that this is the worst refugee or displacement crisis in world history. Um, how is that situation playing out on the African continent and which regions are, are sort of carrying the heaviest burden of accommodating the displaced? Well, thank you for having me. Um, if you like, I can take this opportunity to wish all refugees all across the world Happy Refugee Day because uh, today is World Refugee Day. And as you quick, uh, as you pointed out, <coughs> this is the worst crisis uh, of displacement we have had in many years because all over the world we now have some 65.3 million people displaced. The number has doubled in less than 10 years. Over the past few years, less than five years, we have had people moving from one country to another seeking for a better life, seeking for asylum, and as a result we have the highest number of refugees now. Yet the support has not increased. Uh, we've been having dwindling financial support. We still have uh, relying on the same donors, even though UNHCR and partners are making efforts to find more resources to cater for this increasing number. In Africa, uh, of course, uh, most, most displaced people and most refugees happen to come from third world countries and most of those are in Africa. So in that sense, we have so many refugees that are being hosted by African government and in African countries. And of course, on that note, you know, we know, of course, that the Kenyan government is now talking about closing the Dub refugee camp. As you say, many African countries playing host to the displaced. Kenyan government saying that this is too much of a burden. Do you think the international community there needs to do more to support countries that are hosting the displaced? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, when the Kenyan government says that refugees need to return, it's a good thing because refugees, uh, eventually repatriation of refugees has to be the solution. Mm. But what we are advising everybody and what we're telling the government is that any ref refugee repatriation has to be conducted 
in, the con in conditions of safety and dignity. There has to be humanity uh, put in place and ensure that even when they return, they return to places that are safe, places that have been secured, places whereby they will be able to access uh, health care and other uh, essential, mm. essential uh, basic services provided by both the government of Somalia and the international community. Of course, the international community will need to do a little more. First, the number of refugees that are being resettled abroad or to third countries has to be increased. Right now, the numbers are very minimal, and we're asking the, those countries that have been playing this significant role to continue increasing the numbers. But also, the level of funding that has come to this part of Africa, uh, and I'm talking about the Somali crisis, Yes, it has, it has been good, but we will continue asking the international community not to, uh, not to forget and, and maybe perhaps push in more, in particular for the repatriation of Somali refugees. Mm. And when it comes to the root causes of migration and displacement, especially you know, this mass migration that we're seeing at the moment, um, are we doing enough in terms of addressing the right kind of conflict prevention strategies to ensure that people, you know, that people have safe place, spaces to return to, but of course that countries are safe enough to not force people to leave? Well, that's the responsibility of the government. And as we say, each government has an international responsibility, not only to ensure safety of uh, their countries, places within their countries, but also international responsibility over refugees. And having said that, um, responsib that responsibility cannot be shifted elsewhere. It should not be shifted elsewhere. And therefore, all governments should make an effort to ensure that there's safety, there's security in their countries, but also to allow those that are seeking asylum in those countries to be there until such a time when they'll be able to return mm. voluntarily to their countries of origin. Mm. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for your insights, Duke Moncha. Live for us here in our Nairobi studio, giving us some insights into World Refugee Day.